Uh, I'm Anil Kirsch, uh, some of you uh, know me already. Um, so the challenge, in a way, is um, we want to have several functions to work on the same arguments, or almost the same arguments, but produce different outcomes. Um, so I don't know if this is um, saying too much, so let's try to do it differently. Let's talk about strong types, okay? Now, strong types means that uh, integer int is not a strong type. We, we want to know um, what the int uh, or the float or the double or anything represents. So um, if we have, for example, uh, distance, so distance, we know what is distance. We know that the number represents something. Maybe even we know the measurement units. So if we want to um, send uh, to a method duration and speed, then we can know that the method should return the distance and we understand what the method does. And we know that we will use the outcome, the result of the method, to get distance. And we would not have a bug uh, taking this uh, return value using it as a time or duration because it would not compile. It would not go into a variable which needs to get a distance. Um, so if we want distance, we can call this method. Um, and this is what strong types mean. Uh, and we have it in uh, STD chrono, OK? Uh, so for example, if we want to call this uh, method, we can, uh, or we want to use distance, uh, we can take one and a half hour and multiply it by 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, now the age for hour is in the standard uh, through um, chrono. The key k and age is not, but you can create one through user-defined literals. So if you know user-defined literals, this is something that you can create. If not, you can uh, Google it and see how you do that. Um, and it means that this is okay, but if you want to multiply one hour by one hour, it, it has no logic. So it shouldn't create anything. So if, if we create a uh, multiplication, uh, operator uh, star, operator multiple, uh, for, um, let's say, hours and speed, uh, time, uh, duration and speed, this has a logic, and this doesn't have any logic, so we would not create this one, and it would not compile. So if we have strong types, we can have strong um, expressions. We can have expressions that can compile, and express expressions that could not. And it will, uh, of course, be protect protective programming will uh, assist our code from getting into bugs. Um, I, I guess you all uh, heard about the climate uh, orbit that crashed on Mars because of measurement units, and, and we want to avoid this. Um, so not every operation is allowed. Um, so for example, time operator plus for time and duration is okay. But, um, and, and also for um, subtracting two time points and getting duration is fine. But um, and adding or subtracting duration is also okay. Um, I have 30 minutes, I uh, used two minutes or three, so I have less. Uh, but uh, time plus time doesn't have any sense. So we would not want to support time plus time. Okay, that's fine, that's easy. But the challenge that Tati presented was a bit different. Uh, can we add two points? This was the challenge. And the challenge was the question, is it OK to have plus for two points? And the answer, um, well, I don't know. Um, it, seems, it seems that it doesn't have any point adding two points. Because what is this point? What does it represent? Um, what is 13 and 17? There isn't any point. I understand if you add a point, a point diff to a point. But adding two points, probably it wasn't what you wanted to do, right? So let's just not have operator plus four points, and that's it, okay? Done. But wait, um, maybe there is a need for operator plus four point. What is the need? Um, even for vectors, but yeah, in, in a way it, it uh, goes maybe through the vector. Uh, you want to have the average of two points, okay? You want to find the middle. You want the middle between two points, okay? So you have to add them and then 
uh, divide by two. So you do want to add two points. But then the question is, okay, when you add two points, um, what is the type of adding two points? Is it a point or not? If it is a point, so it means that adding two points create a point, but it is pointless. Uh, so, so you have to, to you have to seek for something else. Now it might be that it would create a new type. Let's call it two points. Okay, so the type of adding two points would be there. Two points, okay, so the auto there would deduce to a new type that we just um, invented, let's call it two points. Now, what can we do with two points? We can divide it by two. Okay, that's nice. Uh, and then when you divide it by two, you get back a point, which has some point. Uh, so, okay, we, we can create a type for two points, and, and it makes sense, but then it doesn't stop there. If it would, it would be easy. Uh, what about multiplying? Is, does it have any sense in multiplying a point by two? Mm -hmm. It's probably the same as adding two points in order to get the average, but we can get the average for uh, the same point by not doing anything. <laughs> so uh, probably if you want a weighted average for two points and the, average, aver the weighted average has to be uh, closer, let's say in this scenario, closer to P2, okay? So we want P2 to um, give more weight to the average. So we want, uh, in this case, only third P1 and two thirds of P2. Okay, so we need multiplication. But then the question is, uh, what is the result of multiplying a point by two? And probably it shouldn't be a point because it's pointless, it should be two points, right? But then, um, would we like to create another class for three points? Let's call it three point, no, probably we do not, okay? So the, the challenge is, how can we, in a way, express the math? And point is just an example of things that can be added, but when we add them, you do not get back the original type, and still you want to do some math on the type that you got, okay? So, um, also by dividing. Uh, so if you say, okay, uh, we understand, okay, you have to uh, support plus and multiple. What about dividing? Uh, well, you have to divide as well. That's correct. I'm, I'm, I'm doing scaling in a way or, or uh, with a free number. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, we have to, to support also uh, dividing in order to achieve the same uh, in this way, which is also something that you can do. So the challenge, uh, if we would uh, um, try to express it uh, on points, uh, we want to allow any points like two points or three points or n points to multiply and divide by any number. The result cannot be used as a point unless getting it back to a single unit point. So if you have three points and then you divide it by three, somehow the compiler needs to understand, oh, you add back to a point, so you get a point, okay? But if you are still with one point and a half, it's not a point, unless you divide it by one and a half, and then it gets back to a point, okay? So we want the math inside the compiler, inside our code, that understands whether you have now two points or three points, which is not a point, but can become a point. Uh, and the rules are, we would rely only on compile time information because we want the compiler to do the work for us, okay? To hold or to deduce the right type. Uh, and we want to implement it not only for points, okay? So I will present uh, the idea for point, but I will present how to, in a way, do it for any type, uh, because any other types may have other rules, but at the end, the rules would be the same in a way. Um, you may want to add or not, you may want to multiply, but at the end, only if you get back to the original type, then you want the original type. Uh, so let's explain the rules that I just uh, presented. Uh, I want to support uh, two, adding two points, but I don't want the type to be point because then you can use it as a point, and it was not a point, there is no point like that. You know, it, it 
doesn't make any sense. And when you um, get back to a single unit, then you should get back a point, uh, and, and it should be uh, compile checked. Uh, then when you take a third of a point, then you can call the variable third of a point, but it doesn't have to be that. Uh, the type should be something like saying like, okay, you have something that looks like a point, but it's not a point, and I remember, I am the compiler, remembers that you have here a third of a point. Why should I remember that? Because if you will multiply, multiply it by three, you will have back a point, okay? Um, and then, yeah, you get back a point when you add those two, okay? So, so uh, let's go uh, to uh, the first step, step one. Okay, step one, um, it, it's not what w uh, we will end up with, but let's have a real type called two points. Okay, so if we have operator plus for point P1, point P2, then we can, uh, at the end, create two points, and that's fine. And then we can have, for the type two points, uh, divide operator that says, okay, if you give me a number, then maybe, maybe I return back a point. But the maybe here is not so simple, because maybe depends on what. How can I know in the divide of two points, and I have two points here, I still not any template type or something sophisticated, I mean, just two points. How can I know whether I should result with point when dividing or with uh, any other thing? So I, I, I can do an if there, but it should be compile time if, if the return value, right? So something here doesn't compile or cannot go. I cannot use a runtime information here in order to understand whether this is fine or not, or whether I create a point back or something else. Okay, so let's try to do something else. So before C17, I will go to C17 and use something else, but before C17, we could use now, in a way, specialization. Wait, this slide doesn't solve the problem. But let's have a struct called the divider, and have a struct divider for type T and a number. Uh, the base template, which is not specialized, is not implemented. We could implement it and, and return instead of uh, two points or instead of something, uh, you know, the, the actual number that we hold. But now we only play with two. So we have either one or two. So we do not uh, implement the base template. The base template is the template which does not have a specialized version, uh, the generic type. Uh, but we do implement the divider for two. So we say, okay, if you call me uh, for divider and the number is two, then I will do the divide somehow. Okay, and I will turn the T. Okay, and now, can we do it now? No, we cannot do it because now it's still an uh, argument and we cannot use it as a template formatter. Okay, so, so let's try to solve that. Um, okay, so let's say that uh, two points of auto slash of auto divide uh, in template uh, uh, method, uh, we still need to get an int, otherwise it is not a by function, uh, we're not a, we want binary op operation, but then you can, you know, you can send any number, we do, we do not use the actual number, we use the, the template parameter, oh, it's ugly, it's, 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 it's bad, uh, uh, the parameter that you send is just in order to, to have a divide, but actually you use the, the, the template parameter, it's not what we want, we want to use the template parameter but we want to deduce it here, in a way. How can we deduce the number, okay, and have the actual template parameter from the parameter that you send to the method? Now, it's, it's, it's something that is doable, okay? Maybe you saw things like that. We say, okay, we'll get a number templated over down, and the method is templated over down, and you should send it a number, which is an object, of type number that I just created now, okay? And when you send in a number, inside the number, the number is templated over some number. So I can deduce the number that you actually sent inside the number, okay? And I, at the end, can know in compile time what is the number that you created or sent to the uh, method. Of course, the number that you send must be templated over a const expression, over something that is known as compile time. That's, that's of course. Uh, so this is what I want to achieve. Okay, and then, of course, I have a class number, which is empty. And then I can call it in the main, like that. Point P, 
equals two points, like uh, let's assume that you can just create two points, and you can divide it by number of two. Okay, and two here is a constant expression, it's known in compile time, and then I go to the right implementation that returns point. Now, in this case, if you put here any other number, it would not compile because uh, there was not any special version for any other number than two. But we do want to support any other number, so we don't want only to support two points. Okay, so let's, uh, we are only at uh, step one. Okay, so step two would be to replace number over int to to STD ratio. The reason the standard STD ratio, STD ratio is a ratio of two numbers. Now, it is needed not be only because we don't want to implement to create a new a new class which is already there. It is needed because, if you remember, we do not only multiply, multiply, we also divide. So suppose that we divide a point by two. Okay, so we have a alpha point. How can we hold alpha point with a ratio? Ratio of one comma two, okay? And we can even have any irrational, uh, no, have any, um, a fraction like third, okay, like third, we don't have to go up zero to dot three three three, just one comma three. So we can add any uh, fraction that you want to create through ratio. Then, uh, for example, we can have uh, two points uh, divided by ratio of two, which is two comma zero. You can just uh, two comma one. You can just say two. It's okay. Or we can have point multiple multiplied by ratio of two comma three, which means two thirds of a point, okay? And it is completed. It's not, you know, a, a fraction as a number, it's completed like the same um, technique that we used with the uh, number. So, okay, uh, we can now uh, use that. Now, the, the next step would be not to use two points, which is a bit daring to points and to two points. Uh, we want to aggregate any amount of anything. So we want an aggregator class that can hold anything, not only points, like uh, T, for example, and for any amount. So for the amount, I'm holding the numerator and the den denominator of the amount that you want to hold, like two-thirds or three-halves or any amount that you want to hold. And why I hold it with two numbers and not just one number in order to hold fractions, okay? So I can hold anything of any type, of any amount. Okay, that's good. Now here, I would like to implement operator plus, operator divide, and operator multiply. Why? Because you can take an aggregate and divide it by two. Now when you divide an aggregate by two, what would be the result? Would it be t or an aggregate of the same t? It depends. It depends on the question of what was the original numerator and denominator. So I can take in operator divide or in operator multiply the amount that you provide, and the amount should be known at compile time. And then I can take the amount and use the amount to understand in compile time whether the result of operator plus or multiply or divide should be aggregate or a array we have t back. And we have t back only if we are back to the single units. Okay, so uh, we can check that, and we need to check that at compile time. Now, if we are before C++ 17, in order to check that in compile time, we still need to use specialization. But since uh, we can get to C++ 17, we can use if cons expression, if cons expression. So uh, uh, this would be what we will do. Uh, let's take a look at point using aggregate. So point would have operator class, and for operator class, it will uh, uh, return an aggregate of point comma two. There is another template uh, argument, uh, the, the one over there, uh, the, the default is one. So if you are not saying what are you dividing, or what is the amount divided by, uh, like in ratio, the default for ratio, the default for our case would be one. Uh, okay, so we get the actual sum, but I remember that it is not, it's not a single point. It's, it's a, a sum of two points, but I remember that it holds two points. 
And why should I remember that? Because I want to know that only after you divide it, then I will have an actual point. Okay. So this is for point. And if we are in, uh, you, if you are using C plus plus seventeen, then we can use uh, if quotes expression inside the method itself. And it says in here the following: inside aggregator, uh, uh, operator multiply. And this is just an example. Is a template operator which says, okay, you will get an aggregator and you are going to multiply it by ratio. Now, the aggregator that you have has its own numerator and denominator. The ratio also has its own multi uh, the, the multi numerator and the multi -denom denominator. And now you want to check whether you are going to do the single unit. Okay, this is the case that you are, this is the case that you are not in the single unit. Okay, because you do the math and you are not in the single unit. And this is the case, you are in the single unit. Now, if you're in the single unit, you want to actually multiply. And you are aggregator. You don't know how to multiply the type T. So you go to the type T and say, okay, T, please do an unsafe multiply. Now, we have to implement that inside T. We could implement inside T just the star, just the multiply, but then the user could call multiply star from outside. So we, in a way, hide it and call it unsafe multiply because it's actually multiplied. And then say, okay, do the multiply and return it as a single unit, okay? And in the other case, you just create a new aggregator which do the math and uh, calculates how many of these do I hold here? And I hold it here. So this is the high level of how to uh, do that. Questions I see, Veer. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can do other things like um, a private token or uh, I have to do that. To, to, uh, but, but yeah, you, you can, uh, in, in the next meetup uh, present, uh, you can in a way say, okay, let's not call it answer to multiply and have different things. You, you can do things that, uh, in a way, I, I wanted to say that, but, but you can do it uh, in a bit more elegant way. Um, so we, uh, we have here the two cases, and the two cases, in a way, create two methods. So we have here actually two methods, two different methods. Uh, each of them is uh, returning a different return type. It's one method written as one method, which eventually, like in templates, creating two methods, each of them returning a different return type. Okay? Uh, here the return type is aggregator, here the return type is uh, point, and it works. Uh, and you can see uh, that uh, if you have two points and you print, and I have uh, um, the extractor for printing for aggregator and prints, I'm an aggregate of two points um, with 1340, but I'm a, an aggregator, don't uh, confuse me with a point. But then when I um, divide it, I'm getting back a point, and it prints, it, it is the point. And it goes to that factor, the print uh, of a point. Question. No, I think not because it's all it's all integers. I'm using ratio, so inside the ratio, all the things that I'm doing is on long. It's I think ratio is uh, is templated over long, so it's yes, yes. This is why I'm using ratio and not a single number which which is the amount. I want the amount as a numerator and denominator, and then I'm in uh, um, you know integral integral types. Uh, so this is the, uh, how it works. I would not go into this link because it's, uh, you know what, let's go into it. Uh, just to show you, it's, it's not so much code. It's, it's at the end, yeah, I just presented, you know, part of it. And, and here is, uh, you know, I, 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 um, I like comments, as you can see. Uh, but uh, it's not a lot of, a lot of code. Uh, there is the aggregator, it's, you know, it's small letters, but uh, eventually there is the point and, and this is the main. So eventually it's, it's a challenge. Uh, I, I remember, you know, talking about the challenge at the break right after Adi presented uh, uh, the fine math. Uh, you didn't call it a, a challenge, but I think that everyone that no, was there... The third uh, section of the challenge, which I never posed. Okay. 
out. So uh, I guess uh, you will. Unless you have more slides. No, uh, I don't have uh, much more, but uh, it means that uh, there will be maybe another talk uh, after you will recall or I will recall the, the additional challenge. Anyway, it works. Uh, just after getting that, and you know, I, I don't know, I, I, I love coding C++, uh, so it was a nice challenge uh, to, to try. But it is, I, I always say to my students that if you do not um, enjoy seeing, um, I don't know, printouts at the console uh, screen, then you are not at the right job. So I enjoy that, uh, seeing, you know, just this printout, uh, going through some compilers, <coughs> Uh, doing that. Uh, is it useful? So I'm not sure that this example is useful. Uh, it was a challenge. Uh, but I'm sure that type safety is important. And in, in a way, you are talking here about type safety. And the industry doesn't deal with type safety as it should. There are places who do that, which do that, and many places who do not, which you know just pass ints and float without having the right, the proper type and type safety is very important and if concept expression is useful and i do see that in other cases so thank you